The way a sewing machine works, big picture, is that there's an upper thread and there's a lower thread. So when we thread our machine, we're gonna start by taking care of the lower thread. So we're gonna go down by where the presser foot is and open the bobbin compartment, take off the cover, and inside you'll find an empty bobbin, which is essentially a baby spool that we're going to fill up with thread. Your machine comes with several extra bobbins, but if you ever need more, you wanna make sure that you get Singer brand class 15 transparent bobbins. These are the bobbins that are designed to work with this sewing machine, and using those bobbins will get you the best sewing results. We're gonna put our bobbin aside for now and open our storage compartment and find our spool cap, which looks like this. And we're gonna take the thread that we're using for our sewing project, put it on the spool pin, which is up here. I'm gonna put this spool cap on to make sure that my thread stays on. And now if I look at the top of the machine, I'll see that there are some helpful diagrams to help me remember how to thread it for winding a bobbin. The first stop is the number one right here. I'm gonna slide it right in there. The second stop is the bobbin winding tension disc, which kind of looks like a screw. And I'm gonna take the thread and mimic what this little diagram is showing. I'm gonna go in front of it and go clockwise around it. And the most important part of this is that the thread slides under the head of the disc and above that little washer. You should feel some tension or resistance on the thread when you pull on it. It's kind of like flossing. You just wanna get it in that little crevice right there. We'll take the tail of the thread and our bobbin, and you'll look for the little holes on the top and bottom of the bobbin. It doesn't matter which side you choose. There's no real top or bottom. You're just gonna pick one of those holes and you're gonna thread up through the hole from the inside of the bobbin to the outside. So again, we're going in on the inner part of the spool and coming out the top like that. You're gonna hold on to the thread tail and we're gonna come over here to this piece, which is the bobbin pin. We're gonna take the bobbin and stick it down all the way on the bobbin pin. You wanna make sure that you push it all the way down. If you don't push it all the way down, then you might accidentally wind thread under the bobbin, which is not what we wanna do. Now to tell the machine we need to wind a bobbin, we're going to pop the bobbin pin over to the right, so now the machine knows that it needs to wind a bobbin. We're gonna hold the tail up and out of the way, and we're gonna push on the foot pedal and the bobbin will start spinning and winding. Once you wind it for a few seconds, you can stop and trim the thread close to the bobbin because the tail's buried, so it's not gonna come unraveled. And then you can just keep filling it. When it's full, it's gonna stop by itself. But if you're not gonna do that much sewing, you can fill it you know, about halfway or so. Whenever you're done, you'll stop with the foot pedal and then pop the pin back over to the left, take off the bobbin, and trim anywhere to separate. And then you have your beautifully wound bobbin. Now let's take care of the upper thread. Before you thread the upper thread, there's two things you wanna check. First, you wanna make sure that the presser foot is all the way in the highest position. So you wanna make sure that presser foot lift lifter is not down, it's all the way up. The second thing you wanna check is the take up lever. You wanna make sure that this is in the highest position because we need to actually thread it so it needs to be accessible so that we can see it and thread it. So once those two things are set, then you're good to start threading. We're gonna undo the thread from the bobbin winding and follow the arrows again and all the numbers. So you can see the first one is the same as it was for the bobbin winding. The second one, number two, we're gonna go right behind this thread guide right here. We're gonna follow the number three down this channel. We're gonna do a U-turn around number four. For the take-up lever, we're gonna mimic exactly what this arrow is doing. We're gonna go back behind on the right side, move it over, and bring the thread forward. And it needs to pop right into the front of the take-up lever, so you wanna make sure it does that before you move on. We're gonna go down past number six. There is a thread guide right under number six that we need to slip the thread into around the right side. And the very last stop before the needle is a thread guide right above the needle. So the easiest way to get the thread in there is to hold the thread horizontally and just tuck it right behind and pull it like that. Again, kind of thinking of it like flossing. The last step of threading the upper thread is threading the needle. The 44S has a needle threader on it, so we're gonna use that. The first thing we need to do for that is make sure the needle is in the highest position. 
the needle threader is right here. It's this white lever. So we're going to snag the thread in this first silver hook, bring the needle threader down, and push it all the way until the tiny little hook goes through the eye of the needle. And then we're going to catch the thread under these prongs and let go. And the needle threader is going to pull the thread right through the eye of the needle. So you can grab the loop that it pulled through and finish the job and pull it the rest of the way through. And we're going to cut this. It's getting a little long. So the last part of threading is inserting the bobbin. So we have our bobbin that we wound before. And our bobbin is a top-loading bobbin. So it's going to go right in the compartment that's already open. The first thing that you need to do is hold your bobbin so that it makes the letter P shape. So imagining that the thread tail is the stem of the P, the bobbin is the top. So holding it just like that, we're going to drop it right into the bobbin compartment. The thread tail needs to go into a groove in the silver metal portion that's right at the bottom of the bobbin compartment. And the groove is at about 6 o'clock. So you want to make sure the thread gets right into that groove. Then we're going to pull the thread up to about 9 o'clock. So the goal here is to get the thread laying in the channel between the silver and the black all the way up to 9 o'clock. And then you can let go of it, just let it hang out. The last thing to do for this portion is hanging onto the upper thread and drawing the bobbin thread up. So you're going to grab the upper thread with your left hand and we're going to hand crank through a whole stitch. So the needle is going to go down and come all the way back up and that's going to draw up the bobbin thread. So I'm hand cranking the needle goes down and it comes all the way back up. And if we pull with our left hand, we'll see that a loop came up just like this. So we're going to grab that loop and pull it the rest of the way through. We can take both tails, put them together under the foot and towards the back. And when you're done, you should see your bobbin thread going from about 8 o'clock on the silver portion right there up straight towards the needle. So at this point, we can put our bobbin cover back on and we're all ready to sew. Once we have our machine all threaded, it's time to test it out, make sure we threaded everything correctly. So we're going to sew a little test seam. The first thing we're going to do is get our machine set up. So you want to go to a regular straight stitch, which is this stitch right here. That's a good stitch for sewing a seam and that's what we're going to use to test out our threading. You want to have your length set at between two and three, about two and a half. That's a good length for sewing a seam, just sewing two fabrics together. The width you can just leave set at zero because we're just sewing a straight stitch, so you can just leave that at zero. And the needle position, you want to make sure that you're on the center needle position for this seam. All right, so we're going to take two pieces of fabric, our test swatch, and we're going to put it right under the presser foot. And I'm going to use the guidelines to the right of the presser foot to make sure that I sew straight. So I'm going to follow one of those guidelines. And there are some labeled in inches and some labeled in metric. So you can just choose one for this. This is just a test and we're going to follow it. I'm going to put the presser foot down to get ready to sew. And then I'm going to push the pedal and start sewing. I'll sew all the way to the end. I'm going to stop. And before I pull out my project or my test swatch, I need to look at the take-up lever and make sure it comes all the way back to the top because I want to finish the stitch that the machine is in the middle of sewing. So I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me until the take-up lever comes all the way back up. I'll lift my presser foot, pull out my test swatch, and cut the threads on the thread cutter, which is right on the side of your machine. And we'll take a look at our stitching. So it's looking pretty good. It looks good from the front and it looks good from the back. So if when you sew your test seam, your stitches look a little bit funky, like if they're loopy on the top or kind of weird looking on the back, then that is probably a sign that you didn't do the threading quite correctly. So you can unthread the upper and lower threads and re-thread them and then do another test swatch.